All right, so this is a, a continuation from what we talked about last week um, as we talked about various types of prayer. Today we're going to talk about prayer and how it relates in praise and worship. All right, so we come, this we talked about this last week, when we come before Yahuwah in prayer, typically, um, also please keep your cameras off. That's why that jumps up on the screen. Um, so whoever has a camera on, please turn it off. So we simply, we want fellowship, we want to be in his presence, right? Worship, we want to be in his presence to tell him how wonderful or awesome he is. Thankfulness, we want to be in his presence to thank him for all that he's done for us. And what we talked about last week, which was petition, prayer petition, we want to ask him for something. So a quick recap from last week. Again, we noticed that we should come to Yahuwah to make our petitions known. It is absolutely 100,000, 10% okay to ask Yahuwah for things because he is our source, he is our father, he is our provider, and he is a giver of good things. So you ask him, he's going to give you something good, right? And then we went to Matthew. Uh, last week we started at verse 7, today verse 9. Which one of you, if his sons ask him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? So if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good gifts to those who ask him? All right, absolutely perfect to ask the most high for things. But we also realize that in many cases, we also have a role to play in order for those prayers to be heard and answered. And ask should be followed by actions. That's the phrase I want y'all to remember. Ask should be followed by actions. Here's an earthly example. Son, dad, can I, got can I get 10 bucks? Dad's answer, sure you can, as soon as you mow that lawn, all right? In order to get what you want, you gotta put your hands to the plow, or in this case, the lawnmower, right? All right, so I've got a story to tell you. All right, little Tyrone, little, little Tyrone, right? L little Ty Ty. He goes out, and he's trying out for his yellow belt. Trying as hard as he can, hard as he might, he just don't quite make it, right? His father consoles him, takes him to the side. Son, you know, just keep trying your best, keep trying your best, you'll get there. Tyrone's amped. He believes everything his father said to him. He said, Dad, you know, I'm going to start a new workout routine. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to train faster. Being a good father, he says, you know what, son? I'll go right along with you. Dad, I'm going to get up at 6 o'clock every morning. We're going to work out. I said, what? Dad says, you know what? No problem, son. I'm right there with you. Oh, so dad gets his Bengay, goes to the store, <laughs> gets his icy hot, stretches out the night before. <laughs> you know what, honey? I love you. But I'm going to bed tonight. So I need my energy for the morning. All right? Yeah. He gets up. He gets up. Y'all got that. All right. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. All right. All right. So he gets up. Six, six o'clock in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning. Knocks on the door. Knocks on son's door. He don't no answer. All right, well, maybe he's just getting dressed. Knocks on the door again. He don't hear no answer. So he slowly opens the door, what? walks door in. No, do door is definitely unlocked. Come on now. Walks on in. And guess what son's doing? Dead asleep. Now, class participation part. What is the righteous thing for dad to do next? <laughs> Put the microphone on. Oh. It don't count because you ain't got no microphone. Since I'm a responsible dad, I will pick him up out the bed and tell him to come home. Anybody else? That's it? That's all? That's it? That is... Y'all wasn't, wasn't listening to last week's lesson, clearly, because that's the wrong answer. A righteous dad is going to do what? He's going to slowly back up out that room, close that door. Daddy going back to sleep. He's going back to sleep. It's a moral of the story. I can help you, but I can't want it more than you. Same thing with Yahuwah. I'm not about to get up and you sleep. You clearly didn't want it, right? So Yahuwah is the same way. Remember, show me your belief by your works. There's something that you have to do in order to get the results you're looking for. All right, and again, we talked about that word for work is literally work, toil, and effort or labor, all right? You can't sleep in and think the Most High is going to move on your behalf. Not going to yeah. happen that way, all right? All right, so that was last week. That was a recap. <laughs> all right. That was, for, yeah, that was just for you, just for you. All right, so today we're going to talk about worship and praise as it comes to prayer. We want to be in his presence to tell him how wonderful or how awesome he is, all right? All right, 
Psalms 153 through 6. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. Simply read that as a praise over and over again. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. Right? That word there is Hallel. Is the word that when we typically think of praise, this is the word we usually think of, right? Hallel Yah, Hallel Yah, right? Praise you. That is correct. All right, let's take another look at Psalms. 95, verse 1 through 2. Oh, come, let us sing to Yahuwah. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. All right, further down in Psalms, 98, 4 and 6. Make a joyful noise to Yahuwah all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. With trumpets and the sound of the horn or the drum, make a joyful noise before the King Yahuwah. That's word there, Samir. Sing, praise, or play an instrument, right? That's nothing too, too unfamiliar to us. I would venture to say that what we just read is typically what comes to mind when we think of praising, right? When we think of worshiping. And actually, each week we open each gathering with two or three songs of praise, just as we did today, right? The praise is rejuvenating, it's uplifting. Most importantly, it's pleasing to the Most High. It is absolutely the right thing to do. There is absolutely nothing wrong with singing songs to the Most High. So taking time to shout exaltations, to sing songs, should be part of what we do each week if not daily, right? We strive to make time for that every day, but again, all in different places in our lives. The, sh uh, the goal is to be able to take time out of your day each day to do this, but we know we do, do this on at least a weekly basis. So many of us have a favorite song that we sing to Yahuwah, or we just sing along with at home or in the car. It's an awesome thing, right? Absolutely wonderful. There is another way to give Yahuwah praise and to worship him, and actually, we saw an example of that during today's session, and I'll distinguish between the difference as we go. All right, Psalms 141, verses 1 and 2. A psalm of Dawood. O Yahuwah, I call upon you. Hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Before we go there, one of the Moreem in the room, when you think of incense and prayer, how do you see them connecting to each other? Nobody, I open it to everybody, anybody in the room. I won't throw Mr. Red on the spot just yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, anybody got it. I, anybody can answer it. So can I answer the question? I just want, <laughs> I want to make sure that your answer will be heard. Oh, and then okay. I'm going to come to you next. Just make sure they can hear everybody online. Yeah. Everybody online can hear us. Excuse me. All right, go ahead. When you think of incense and prayer, how do you see them relating? Oh, go, going up. Going up. Hand in the back. He stole my Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and ascending, right? An olam, ascending. It's ascending before you, right? So, a psalm of the Dawood, O Yahuwah, I call upon you, hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. All right. So here we see that David's prayer is counted as an incense, right? All right. So let my prayer be counted as incense before you. So prayer is multifunctional. Do any of us use incense in our prayer? A couple hands. Yes. On the room. Hand online. Do we use it in our worship? Yes. Ten. All right. Yes. All right. I knew that'd be the answer. That's why I asked the question. Yes. These are, these are verbal hands. <laughs> I, I miss you, Ock. I, I miss you. I miss you too. All right, so incense is incorporated and associated with, associated with an ascending offering or a sacrifice in both prayer and in worship. All right, let's look at 1 Kings 8.22. It 
Then Shalomo stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven and said, O Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, there is no El like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You have kept with your servant Dawood, my father, what you declared to him. You spoke with your mouth and with your hand have fulfilled it this day. Verse 27. But will Yahuwah indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea, O Yahuwah my Elohim, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, my name shall be there, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers towards this place. All right, so we see that he asked you to listen to his what? Prayer. To his prayer. All right, tefillah is a word we're, most of us are familiar with. Again, yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea, O Yahuwah my Elohim, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you this day. Let's also look at what that prayer was. Verse 22, Salomo stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands towards heaven and said, what? O Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, there is no El like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, showing steadfast love. You have kept with your servant, Dawi, my father, what you declared to him. Heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. What do you ask the Most High for? Nothing. Nothing. I, I don't do trick questions. <laughs> he didn't ask him for anything. He simply stood before the Most High in his prayer and told him how wonderful he was. That's all he did. So this wasn't singing, yet Yahuwah was given praise. There were no instruments, yet he was worshipped. Shalomo stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, spread out his hands towards heaven and sang. Oh, he said, he said, he, he didn't sing anything. Yamir, to say, to mention, to think, or command. How many times have you offered a silent prayer to the Most High? Thinking, commanding, simply saying, you're stating, you're not singing, you're not bringing symbols or anything like that. You're simply stating to the Most High how wonderful he is. Let's take a look here at Hebrews 13. Through him, then, let us continually offer up what? A sacrifice of praise to Yahuwah. So praise is considered a sacrifice. But we also just saw that praise can be delivered through a prayer. So through prayer, you can offer up a sacrifice to the Most High. That is what? The fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. The word there is kilos. The Lord says, a lip, a pouring place of what? Water. Let's take another look. John three seventy eight. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow what? Rivers of living water. Starting to see a little bit of a connection there? All right. Also, remember what your heart is, right? We talked about that over and over and over again. Somebody tell me what, what the heart is online or in the room because he's going to try to take it like 87 different levels so let's just start it somewhere here first I, w I was actually going to say the mind because um, the heart is deceitfully wicked and so whatever is in the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks mm -hmm. but that's in your mind it's in your mind all right Aki online who couldn't wait go ahead I know. Don't be quiet. So also that. means uh, your heart, something that's something that you teach within yourself. Remember the lamed meaning to teach or to learn. The bet means the house or means in or within yourself. Mm -hmm. Toda, toda. Both answers were correct. Remember that true praise starts in your heart. Oh, two bags. All right. So praise begins in your heart. Praise first is a state of mind. You have to bring yourself to that place. You recognize how awesome Yahuwah is, 
in your lab, and then you pour out the praise from your lips. All right? Whether it be in song or in shouting, in playing of instruments, or today's topic, in your prayer. It's going to start in your heart first. Naaman has a hand up. Go ahead, Naaman. Uh, uh, Shalom, Aki. You were meant, you were asking, you know, about the heart. Well, it's written that a wise man will speak of the goodness of his heart. And also the wicked man will speak of the things that are in his heart. So if a wise man is speaking of the goodness out of his heart, then what is in your heart will proceed through your lips. Correct. Correct. As we said, it's your mind. It's also what guides or leads or instructs your house, which will, as you said, if it's told, so things will come out. Raw things will produce raw actions. You're, you're right online. All right, let's take a look at Psalms 86. We're going to read all the way from 1 to 15 first, and then we'll break it up. A what of Dawood? This is Psalms, right? Wait, wait, wait. I thought Psalms meant you had to sing. Oh, we're in Psalms. Yeah, we have a prayer of Dawood. Incline, incline your ear, O Yahuwah, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am set apart. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my El. Be gracious to me, O Yahuwah, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Yahuwah, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Yahuwah, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Yahuwah, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the mighty ones, O Yahuwah, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Yahuwah, and shall honor your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are El. Teach me your way, O Yahuwah, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Yahuwah, my El, with my whole heart, and I will esteem your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O Yahuwah, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Yahuwah, are an El merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So Dawood is giving esteem to Yahuwah, again, through his prayer. Let's look at some of the things he says. Let's look at verse 5. You, O Yahuwah, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who will call upon you. I call upon you. Why? Because you are faithful and you will answer me. Yahuwah is like every other mighty one, right? No, no. Oh, verse 8. There is none like you among the mighty ones, O Yahuwah nor are there any works like yours. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are El. And I will esteem your name forever. Forever, I'm going to come ask you for something. Oh, forever, I'm going to give to you what you are due, your esteem, right? You, yo, O Yahuwah, are an El merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So what was the whole purpose here of this prayer? He was just giving us steam. He was just praying to the Father. Okay. Someone in the room? I heard, I heard you back there. I wasn't looking at you, but I heard you. Say it in the microphone so everybody can hear you. The button. The, the, the button. There you go. You got the he, he went there just to esteem the father, right? Who else was going to ask something? I saw somebody reach for a microphone. Go ahead, in the room. Well, he, he had a petition. Hmm? He has a petition. Hmm? But that was a small part of it. Right. The larger part of it was esteeming the most high. Hmm? We're going to get to that, that, that point later, right? Because even if we do come to a petition from him, we should first praise him, right? Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. You want to be in his presence, praise should be involved. But as he pointed out, in this particular instance, it was a small portion of the time he spent before the Most High in this instance. All right, Isaiah 56, 7. 
These I will bring to my set apart mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. So into the house of prayer, he's bringing what? Burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. But he said it's about burnt offerings and sacrifices. Why didn't he call it a house of sacrifices and burnt offerings for all people? We see here that there's a correlation of sacrifice and offerings with prayer. They all go together. The house is called the house of prayer. All those sacrifices and offerings are made there. Sacrifice, offering, praise, and prayer all work together, and there are various types of sacrifice, right? He said, let his praise be considered as incense. Let his praise be considered a sacrifice. So it's all sacrifice is not just slaughtering of animals, right? It also involves your prayer. Because again, you bring in burnt offerings, you bring in sacrifices to the house of prayer. They're all tied together. A psalm of Dawood. Yahuwah, I call upon you, hasten to me, give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up my hands, the evening sacrifice. We saw that earlier, right? This Shalomo stood before what? The altar of Yahuwah. Why do people use, why did they use altars? For what purpose? The altar is for the sacrifice. And he spread out his towards heaven and said, Again, the altar is where sacrifices and burnt offerings are made. But again, when we look at kings, what sacrifice did he actually give him? The fruit of his lips. He gave him the fruit in this case. But the fruit was the fruit of his lips. All right. A few other things, then we'll wrap it up. We're not going to make this long. When we pray in this assembly... We pray standing, facing the east, right? Again, this is an open question, if you raise your hand first. When you pray, what are some of the ways that you position yourself before the Most High? We have a hand in the room. Go ahead, Michelle. So one way is um, uh, shacha, is where you prostrate yourself on the ground. Face down. When you do that, we can't hear the Oh, sorry. I'm trying to demonstrate it. Maybe you can't see me online either. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but it's basically where you just, um, that's one method where you just uh, prostrate it, you know, laying on your face mm -hmm. with your palms up, you okay. know, and praying with your face down. Correct. That's physical position. Correct. Absolutely. What's another position, nah, physical position we up. take? Now, nah, Mana, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Jamal Nike. When you are turning towards the east, your palms are raised up and your eyes are closed and your head is bowed. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me? Can't, can Good answer. Toda. Toda. All right. What, go ahead, Yuka said. Um, another position is to where you are on your knees. Um, your face is to the ground, forehead to the ground, and palms uh, up, like in a, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> good answer, good answer. All right, I was going to have my six-year-old come up here and demonstrate the way we pray before her bedtime each night. So consider when you were a child and you, your parents first taught you how to pray. How did they teach you to pray? We have a hand in the room. Go ahead. Usually on the edge of a bed, kneeling down, mm -hmm. but, but back then we put our hands together. We don't do that. Sorry, I couldn't hear. So, someone was speaking? When, okay. On the side or edge of your bed, on your knees, kneeling down. You Not, not necessarily having your head bowed down. Sometimes mm -hmm. you may, sometimes you may not. Yeah. Typically, that's, that's the first time we learn how to pray. We pray before bedtime, right? Well, all good answers, all told answers. Let's take a look at Bereshit 22.5. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. Let's look at Shemot 24 verse 1. Then he said to Moshe, 
come up to Yahuwah, you and Aharon, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. What's the word? What's the definition there? What's the actual definition? To bow, to bow down, right? Sounds a lot like a praying position, right? But he said that we were going to worship him. Again, there's no mention of singing, no mention of shouting, no mention of instruments or symbols. We're going to bow down from afar. You're going to go over there and bow down. Right? Just, some, just something to think about. Just something to think about. Again, they took a praying position as they gave their worship. Let's look at Psalms. Again, oops, no, nah, I don't need that one. We went over that one already. We'll skip that one for now. All right, just a few closing thoughts, right? Closing thought number one. Um, you know what? Let's give this, let's give this example. Let's go back to that prayer of Dawood. It says, incline your ear, O Yahuwah, and answer me. Why? For I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am set apart. What does he ask him to do next? Save your servant who trusts in you. Be gracious to me. Why? To you do I cry all the day. Then he asks him next to do what? Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Yahuwah, I lift up my soul. Let's look at verse 6. He says, give ear to Yahuwah to my prayer. Listen to my plea for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. Right? What kind of mood is it safe to say that Dawood is in right now? It's an open, open question. Uh, uh, Slick, how do you want hands on this? Uh, I'll give you an answer. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll raise my hand. Did Seems you, like he, he was in distress. Yeah, in distress. He he could be in a very saddened mood, very low in spirit. Correct. Sad, distress, distressed. Okay. So let me ask you this. We also noticed that in this very same prayer, this verse, he gave Yahuwah what? Praise and esteem and honor. We talked about that the first time we looked at the verse, right? What kind of mood are we usually in when we start our assembly each week with praise? I'm in a great mood. <laughs> I like that answer. For the most part, Whatever we had going on, we pretty much leave it at the door and we come here in a good mood, right? And then we sing our songs and we're in, even in a better mood. Or before we hit that first note, we find ourselves in a better mood, right? Maybe. Maybe. But we don't need to be in a certain mood in order to praise and worship Yahuwah, right? It's not about what mood you're in. Dawood was in prayer to Yahuwah in distress. Yet he boasted in his prayer how great Yahuwah is. Let us also remember that as we go through this journey of life, right? Something else to consider. Some of us are naturally gifted singers and some of us aren't, right? So whether we sing well or not, many of us will use song to praise and worship and may think to forego a chance to praise and worship because we just aren't in the singing kind of mood, right? I just, I just don't feel it right now. That's the reason to do it anyway. Don't let that stop your praise. Don't let the mood you're in determine whether or not you're going to praise him. In fact, I would say after hearing this that I'm not in the mood to sing. I'm not in the mood to clap. But I can drop on my knees. I can turn to the east. I can put my hands in the air and simply say, state, say how wonderful he is. And then after that, if I'm a singer by nature, I may find myself in a mood to then take it to song. Right? So you always want to use your prayer to honor and esteem Yahuwah. Let's close thought number one. Thought number two. 
just a, just a reminder here, there is nothing here intended in any way to convey a message that what we've been doing is wrong, right? It is great to sing songs, to stand before Yahuwah and shout and dance and make a great noise. I even encourage everyone to sing during our praise sessions, whether you can carry a tune or not, right? I remember myself as a child, when I was in church, whatever, we'd be singing and praise and worship last an hour, and I'm not a good singer. So as a child, as a, as a teen, that kept me from being involved because I wasn't a good singer, so I didn't want to sing, right? But you don't have to sing out loud, you don't have to go shouting, but you can open your mouth and make some noise come out, make some sound come out whether you're a good singer or not, all right? So again, it's not about us doing anything wrong, but one of the purposes of the lesson is to have you consider adding praise and worship to your prayer routine in addition to the praise and worship you already use. And here's the part I want to be mindful of. Don't simply use praise for a minute or two as a way to enter into his presence, right? We always, when we start our prayer, typically we'll ask him for forgiveness. We want to be in a clean state of mind, a clean state before we enter him. We tell him how awesome he is, and then we go right to the other purpose of our prayer. After this lesson, I want you to take time and spend 10 minutes in whatever prayer position works best for you to just tell him how wonderful he is. The first time you do it, use the verse from the lesson and search out a few more verses where someone in that Torah is telling Yahuwah how wonderful he is and just say what they're saying. Just write it out. Just say what they're saying until you find it in your lab to be able to express what you're feeling, right? Because the first time you do it, I'm not going to say all right, it's going to 10 minutes straight and just tell you how wonderful you are, right? You're going to need some tools. You're going to need some help to take some practice, all right? So then once you can master the 10 minutes, what I want you to do next? Increase it, double it. Take it to 20, wherever the Ruach moves you, right? For some of us, we're already at that place. We come to the Most High just to tell him how wonderful he is, whether bow down or standing before him all the time. Uh, Quincy has a hand on that. <laughs> So wherever you currently are, whatever you currently practice, add some time to it. So we have a hand raised, and I'm so appreciative of this Ak for raising his hand. The floor is yours. Matter of fact, you could talk for a minute and 30 seconds just because you raised your hand. Yeah, it's kind of hard, uh, but I'm gonna try my best to stay within the rules that, that I heard. Um, Eddie Ray, I said that uh, one of the main things that we should do uh, when we do our um, praise and our worship is believe in it. Sometimes people just do praise and worship, just praise and worship and it's almost like a checklist, you know, like they check that off or, mm -hmm. you know, they just want to put it out in the air. But if you're doing any type of praise and worship, you should believe in what you're saying and what you're asking for and who you worship, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, they really need to consider you know, uh, those things, because once you put out your praise or worship, then, you know, just expect it to be received or expect it to be heard or listened to or obeyed, you know, so that'll be one of the things that I think they need to consider as well. Hallelujah. There's a second witness to what we talked about earlier about the condition of your heart, right? Your heart needs to be in it. It's not just words. You truly have to believe that he's as wonderful as you're saying that he is. Todaki, appreciate that. All right, any questions? We got questions in the back. I uh, um I would like to say something, you know, because faith without works is dead. Jeremy Yahoo has his hand up. Hold on, we had two in the room first, and then I'm gonna come to Yaki. My my question um, mm -hmm. before was about um, the incense you mm -hmm. had mentioned. Is, is someone speaking? Because we couldn't hear online. It's really low. My apologies. Um, previously, it was spoken that uh, incense uh, is. Can you hear me? Previously, it was. Yeah, yep, we, yeah, we, we can hear you. Okay. So previously, you spoke of incense, and I, I've always thought about that, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure in the context of why I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to just do it to do it mm -hmm. i just can you tell me more about i mean because other some other people said that they had incense mm -hmm. al also is that that's another form of okay 
I'll answer it this way and others that want to um, also add to it can, but I'm gonna say it this way. Remember, we talked about just moments ago that we wanna make sure that we're in the right place with our heart, right? We wanna make sure that we mean what we say. If you're in distress, shout out to you who in the moment, right? But for the best that you can, you wanna take the time and set the environment, set the area for where you are. I was trying to avoid the word mood, but you, that's what you're doing, you're setting the mood, right? Right. So, and when Ishabah comes in, I go into like a different prayer mode than I do throughout my day, right? I always start my day in prayer, but as the sun is setting going into Shabbat, right? I make sure that I'm clean. I make sure I wash my face, I've cleaned my feet, I've cleaned my hands and my ears, and I make sure I clean my mouth. And then I have my prayer rug out, because this is set apart time, set apart space for me to be before the, the creator of the universe. So that's what you're doing when you, when you light your incense, right? It's not just, oh, it smells good. You're, you're setting it for who? Not, not for yourself. You're setting it for him, right? So that's why you're entering in. That's why, that's my thoughts on why you would add incense to it. Did anyone else want to add anything to that particular question before the next question is asked? I will ask sure, it, no problem at all. Go ahead, Aki. Uh, when you think about it, just in the Torah itself, you know, when you, when you, when you see the, the priest going with this, with the frankincense, I mean, with the incense, you notice that, you know, uh, it's already been prepared as, as, uh, as uh, Mika was sharing with you guys earlier. It, it is, you know, I, I know he said he didn't want to use the word mood, but it is setting the mood or the tone, if you will. So there are times where when you have the time to, you know, relax and, and get everything set in order, like in the, uh, in the, in the temple, there's an order that was set up for these priests to go in and certain things had to be done first before they can even go in and do anything. And then you see later on as he went into uh, uh, Psalms and also in, in Revelations, it talks about the, the, uh, the uh, prayers go up as incense. So these incense repre represents prayer. So sometimes these are just tools to help you in your, in your, in your moment, if you will. Um, but, we kind of look at it from a pattern of Torah first, you know, and once you see that, how they use it. So my encouragement technically would be is, you know, just kind of look up the word incense. Uh, and then from there, look at them to different places where they used it. And then from there, kind of see what it looks like in Psalms and, and in Revelations. Then you can kind of see that this pattern is something that started from the temple. Now, mind you, the temple itself was a representation of something that was given to them or was given to Moses. Um, you know, by way of an image or a picture, if you will. And so he had to copy that. So it, there must be some significance to the father about this incense going up. Uh, so that's what I would share. Todaki, uh, yes, your room, reach for a microphone for a second. We're going to add to that. All right. All right. You were next. All right. So I got two questions. Aki. First of all, shalom to you. Shalom, shalom. Uh, so my first question is, what's the precept that I can link up with uh, Isaiah 56, chapter 7? I was looking through First Kings 5 as, um, for my house shall be called a house of prayer. I was trying to find out the mm -hmm. precept that I can master that for the First Kings. Do you know what I can find it up? As far as, I just want to understand, understand the question. All right, so Mikael, what I was asking is, I, you know, when Solomon finished building the house or mm -hmm. whatnot, and he was saying, like, all nations can come to his house mm -hmm. or the temple to give praise or something like that. I would try to find that precept. I would try to find the, the matching verse? Yeah, the, 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 where he quoted that my house should be a prayer for a um, house of all people. I don't have that in front of me right now. That's not my strength. To, to actually chapter and locations? No, what I'm asking is the, um, the other precept to match up. I was I was trying to find the first king's precept to match up with Isaiah fifty six um verse seven. I was wondering if you have it, but if if you don't have it, I'll use my other question. All right, we'll talk about it over the meal. Yeah. What's your other question? All right, so my other question is, um, what's the what's the inspir like what inspired you to create this series concerning the prayers? Oh, anytime I get before you guys is something that the most high told me to talk on. I don't do any of this for myself. 
not playing them games. <laughs> but yeah, he, he led me there. Um, technically, um, I do the prayer call. So I've been doing that a lot more frequently over the last several months. So I'm a lot more attentive to prayer than I was before. Um, and then just in my personal thoughts, and actually it was something that um, Lamont had mentioned before, because I hadn't really given as much thought about using prayer for praise. And then I heard that about two weeks ago. And then that's when I um, was led to talk about a little bit further. And I didn't want to go through into too, too many um, verses with the incense, because I didn't want to um, distract from the message. What he gave me was to just have people incorporate it into their prayer and people that are already doing it to increase the time in it. But yeah, there, there's many different ways you can go. And especially, please take heed to the moray and look for those verses and revelations um, regarding the incense. Uh, I think there was a question online first. So you had and then we'll come Yahoo. to the bottom. German Yahoo. Go ahead, Aki. Okay, I got a uh, two-part question as well. So um, in Matthew 6, when uh, Yahusha had gave his Tombadim, like, the um, after this manner, therefore I pray you, is that a template of the order in which we should say or ask things in our prayer? It's like, that. Is that the guide for that? For it's like, because I know we spoke on how Shalom didn't ask for anything at all. Of course, we know we had those times where we pray in that manner. But when we do, is this the is this like basically the order in which we should do it? Um, typically, when I have my prayer time, that's usually where I start. Um, I usually start with that prayer and then move forward from there. Um, I can't say I don't want to speak for the Most High. I say that's how you have to do it every time. But typically, I incorporate that in my prayers. Um, and then move yeah, on. it's it's really about, um, you know, if for, for those that pray every day, you know, not every day is a petition, a petition for the father to do something. Mm -hmm. So because of that, if, if you're communicating with him every day, Mashiach is giving you a, a way of just, you know, giving him some giving him the steam every day. Now, of course, there's some, you know times where you got to pray for this and sometimes you got to pray for that and, and things like that. But typically as a, as a baseline, you know, if I just, if I'm doing great today, I don't really, you know, I just want to give him praise. You, you use the, what they call the father's prayer. Um, if you're going through something, then you, you can still use the father's prayer, but you also can, you know, pray for what you're going through. Mm -hmm. um, and if you just want to give him different types of sacrifice of praise, you can do that too. But in general, it's just really about every day, you know, doing that type of prayer, we don't have, you know, uh, if, for those that have a prayer life, I'm just, you know, I don't want to, um, you know, put anyone out there like that, but if, if you t communicate with them every day, that'd be a great prayer to do every day because it helps you. And as you, if you, uh, do that prayer, you'll notice that a lot of stuff will come to your head as you saying it. <laughs> I mean, a lot of other things that you start to you say it, but then you start to, you know, because of these things, it kind of bridges off to doing other uh, parts of that prayer as well. Okay. Okay, so the second part of that, of my um, question is, so in the a little verse above that, it speak on uh, praying in public. So uh, I had it not too long ago, I was on, um, scrolling through my socials and I seen a uh, girl I used to go to school with. She said she was about to go live because she felt like praying. And I had uh, gave her the verse uh, in uh, chapter six saying, uh, don't be praying in public and go into your secret place. Was I wrong for that? Because uh, I, I know at some point in time, like we do, we I don't know what we would consider what we do in public. Or would that be, you know, saying considered private because we it's not just us in our own in our little prayer closet or nothing like that. We in the group. So I want to know, was I wrong for giving her that scripture or, you know, saying what that's basically my question. Well, I think you should have uh, maybe defined it a little bit. More. I, I definitely, uh, you know, saying gave some insight with it as well. Not didn't just like throw her the scripture, but kind of like kind of gave her advice with it. But. It wasn't met well, I would say that, honestly, but I just felt like it was putting me to, to, to kind of advise her, like, I don't think you should do that because it didn't seem like it was, I don't know, it was me personally. I didn't feel like she was genuine about it in the, in the essence that she was going about it. But that's, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to, I don't want to be deterring nobody from doing that if that, if that wasn't, if it's not wrong for them to be doing it. 
Well, right. Um, I was saying that, but basically, if a person is doing it to be seen, that's absolutely a no go. Right. So you're not going to a person should be doing it to be seen. Right. However, um, if it's something just to give them praise, because the, the word prayer, you know, is kind of loose in the English. Mm-hmm. But as you notice that the word prayer and praise, there are many Hebrew words for it. Mm-hmm. So it depends on which Hebrew word technically she's using. She can do public praise. Why? Because it's giving esteem to Yah. They may want to know, you know, what makes this person so excited. So, you know, this way or that way to give him praise and honor to the father versus, you know, someone just doing something to be seen, you know, and heard and and want, they want to be looked upon as so set apart. You know, you don't need to be doing those things out in the public in that particular thing. But we do praise and worship to say uh, together as, as a mishpachar, as a congregation, or as an assembly, those things, you know, warrants that. You, you, we see that throughout scripture. Um, so I guess, like you said, if you saw her doing it for, or, let's say, a wrong reason or the reason to be seen, then yeah, you give her, you know, good advice. If if she's saying, no, I'm just doing this because I just, I'm just so excited about what he does. I mean, some of us be like, hallelujah, and we got like some type of esteem or or aura, if you will, that people like man something about you and and wh- wh- what do you worship and and so that's because we're giving the father esteem not considering ourselves we're just only considering yeah okay. yeah that's what i appreciate that and i just wanted to add Go ahead, to Michelle. That, shalom i just wanted to add when you talk about like the secret place right mm-hmm. i mean like that's really like a, a state of mind right as well i mean it's really you know we talk about i've hidden or treasured up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's, that's, that's hiding, you know, that's, and I heard a brother talk about it one way. It's like, if you, you can go into your, your, uh, your, your prayer closet, but you know, physically that's, you know, someone could still kick in the door or something, but that, but, but you know, think about your lab as your, your inner man, your innermost person. Sometimes we're on the move or something. I, for me, my job, I have to be on the move a lot and I still, you know, need to pray sometimes when I'm on the move in a certain situation. So I think it's about, you know, guarding our heart with all diligence and the intention of what the prayer is for about not to, it's not some sort of religion where we're trying to receive esteem from men. We pray in the same thing all the time, but really the purpose, the functionality of the prayer, and it's really about a personal relationship between you and the Most High. It's not a, you know, it's not trying to, um, yeah, like you said, be seen by men to uh, receive praise by them. So, I yield. Yeah, it's a, it's about a, a, like we've mentioned time and time again. It's about the intention, the reasoning why, right? Your heart condition. Because honestly, you can be praying alone for the wrong reason. You could be could just be you, and you're just up there screaming and shouting and acting a fool, and the Most High ain't hearing the words you're saying. And it could just be you there. So you want to make sure that publicly or privately. That your lab is in the right place, your reasons for doing it are the right reasons. Um, Nabat, did you still want to say something? So, um, I wanted to bring up um, something that actually came up with my 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 brother asking me a question. So, he asked me a question about the usage of of sage, you know. Mm-hmm to clear negative energy, you know, what, what, what is, how does that, uh, is that righteous? Is that not righteous? Like, what, what is that? I mean, the sage in of itself, <laughs> Rabbi Google is on the move. <laughs> well, I, I would just tell that person, honestly. Um, it sound like they have a righteous yeah. motive behind it, just, just off top. I don't know for that for sure. I don't know your brother. Uh, but simply saying that I, I did sage and now the, the Shadim are going to run, they be running somewhere to catch their breath. They'll be back seven fold. So I would, be, I would be, you know, cautious with saying he's doing the right thing. I would have a full-blown conversation with him, see what the motives are, what he's trying to accomplish. Go ahead, Aki. Yeah, but I would ask them. I would say, what, what you know, um, what scripture do you use to say that sage was sage was used for that purpose? And you see, in other words, but before um, you yourself give an answer, you first ask them, where did you get that from? Where did you hear? Where did you read about it from? 
what's the address to that so I can see? Now, if we say, hey, the, the priest, they use, let's say, frankincense and myrrh, or they use these for prayer. We say, now, we do know where it's written about these particular things that were used mm -hmm. and an actual uh, censor that was used. And that censor went in with them this one. But if you're saying specifically sage, as if sage is the one that demons from a sage, then you say, hey, well, wh where where'd you get that information from? <laughs> Somewhere on the internet. All right, uh, who else was online? Who's next online, Aki? Yahuka said, go ahead. Hey, Shalom. Uh, this, these, um, these precepts right, my, right here might help in terms of his house being called a house of prayer for all people. Um, one is Mark 11. 15, excuse me, Mark 11, 17, uh, Mashiach himself uh, just repeats the, script, the, the scripture. Uh, so Mark 17 says that he was teaching, saying to them, has it not been written? My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Um, you also have a uh, bear sheep for Genesis 12 and three, where through the, the promise of, um, that Yahuwah, the Elohim, Yahuwah Elohim gave to Abraham and says that uh, through his descendants, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And then you also have Isaiah 49, uh, 6 and 7. It says, and he said, it is a light thing that you should be my servant and rise up the tribes of Yahakob and to restore the preserved of Yashorol. I will also give you a light to the other nations that you may be my Yahusha, Yah Yeshua or my salvation until the end of the earth. Thus says Yahuwah, the redeemer of Yahshua'ah and his Kedush one, to whom man despises, to him who the nations abhor, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship because of Yahuwah that is trustworthy and the Kedush one of Yahshua'ah and he that has, that has, uh, and he shall chose you. So those are just just some right there to where the um, the, the 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 nations are coming before Yahuwah and and praising him. So that's just a little something. That's all. Hallelujah. Now, Mana, go ahead, Koti. Oh, shalom, shalom. Um. I'm going to go back to what we were discussing in reference to coming into the most High's presence, um, you know, with the clean body and the incense. And I just want to say also, when we're coming into the presence of the father, we, we have to have the right mindset. Um, we can't have a lot going on in our minds. Our minds have got to be, you know, a clear and in and, and focused. Um, and I always take a cleansing breath. Um, when I'm in the presence of the Father, um, because it, it, it's for me, it, it is a humbling experience to be in His presence, and I don't take that lightly. So my mind and my thoughts are definitely clear, and I'm focused on why I'm in His presence. Um, the other thing is singing, praising His, you know, His name. Anyone. Like you, like you were saying before, I can do it. You can do it when you're praising, when you're, when you're cooking, cleaning. I praise him when I'm doing my yard work, when I'm in my garden, in my car. So, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. It, it really is. So I yield. Aliyah, any other questions out there? All right. So, again, uh, we're going to close out in prayer. Uh, prepare your hearts and minds. Um, but again, just be mindful of your prayer life and using um, prayer as a chance to esteem the Father. Is Shirak Abiyahu online? Can can everyone hear me? Can can can. can. All right, shalom shalom. Firstly, I want to say to Al Shirak, awesome message. All right, all hearts and minds are clear. Going to the presence of our Father. Barukata Yahua, the head of Malek Haulan. Barukaba Bashim, Yeshua Hamashiach. We ask firstly of Yahua 
for your mercy upon us, for all sins, transgressions, and iniquities, all things in which we have thought, said, and done that are not of you. We acknowledge the sins of our forefathers that have brought us into our current state of separation from you. May you have mercy upon their souls in your great day. We stand in awe of your presence here today, Avenu, giving esteem and honor to you. Your word has gone forth on this Hayom, hallelujah, making supplication that the instructions that are laid forth are heard, understood, and accepted in the hearts of the witnesses here before you. May we till up the soil of our hearts and enrich it with your wisdom so that the seeds of your Torah take root and grow within us. For Adon Yeshua has admonished us. That which is sown on good soil is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So let it be so that we each be laborers that yield a hundredfold and have a bounty to return to your storehouse. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Aven, for using your servant here today. We are grateful for his obedience and bringing forth that in which he has heard from you, making it plain how to enter into your presence in our prayers. Pour back into him tenfold that which he has given. We ask for a better car over the households of our leadership and pray for a continued covering over them in their mishpaka. Increase their borders and expand their reach. We continue to ask for your hand to be over our head, Mori Lamadjohu, and his mishpaka as they carry out your instructions and lay out the work in the land of promise in which you have assigned them to do. We ask for a better call over all of your servants of the Knesset, those who are there in person and those of us here online. You know the needs of your people. So we ask that you meet out justice as you see fit. May your perfect will be done above all else. We pray over the nourishment of our bodies as we partake in the bounty in which you have given us. Let there be nothing harmful or contaminant which may detriment our health or deter us away from doing anything other than righteousness. Barak the hands that have prepared it and increase their portion. And as we depart from this gathering, May we remain in your presence and return to our respective destinations in Shalom, Ahad, and Sedek. Peace, love, and righteousness. We say Torah Rabbah for this opportunity to have gathered together and we greet one another in Shalom as we leave. Again, we thank you we love you. And we brook your Kodesh name, Yahuwah, sovereign of all. As we make these petitions in the blood, power, and authority of our Adon, our Melech, our Gadol Kohim, our Metevaket, and Senegal, intercessor and advocate on high, Yeshua HaMashiach, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. And I yield. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.